The One Mic with Big Mike show starts in five minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in four minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in three minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in two minutes. Follow the show on Spreaker.com or the Spreaker app and be a part of the show via the live interactive chat room. You can text your thoughts to 404-902-8104. Check out the Facebook live stream at facebook.com slash one mic with big mic. The one mic with big mic show starts in one minute. with Big Mike show starts in 30 seconds. The One Mike with Big Mike show starts in 5, 4, Three, two. 
One mic. One mic. I'm back. It's the One Mic with Big Mike show. Live. There ain't no goddamn take. Interactive and on demand. <laughs> one mic. Yeah, a sports show. The best move of LeBron's career, man, was dragging his sweaty ball sack right across Draymond Green's the nape, the nape of his neck, and getting that dude suspended, and so much more. What's going on right now with Donald Trump? This is America, and it just it, it tickles me to death when I when white people are so shocked and appalled by it. What? It's the one mic with Big Mike show. Of course, it's like anything, like ammonia or you sniffing glue is gonna get you high. You've been warned. The One Mic with Big Mike Show start now. Here he is. He's real cocky. He's real loud mouth. He's real flamboyant. He don't he don't cow down to people. Big, Big Mike. 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 Hump day. Yes, indeed, it is Hump Day. Wednesday here on the One Mic with Big Mike Show. What up, y'all? What's going on? Hope you guys had a good first half of your week. Getting ready to embark upon the second half. It is the One Mike with Big Mike show here live on Spreaker.com, spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Also on the Spreaker app that you can get from any of your app stores, whatever mobile device you may have. You can also hear the show live on TuneIn every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, The show is also streaming live video on Facebook right now, so head on over to my Facebook page. Give it a like. Right, give it a like. At the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E, at one mic with Big Mike. Same handle you want to use to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. As far as uh, getting involved in the show and being a part of the show, it's quite simple. You can do so in a variety of different ways. One, you can text the show at 404-902-8104. And you're going to definitely need that number tonight because if you've got a fantasy football league, you're about halfway through uh, your regular season right now, you're going to need some help. A lot of bye weeks this week, so my man Rob Grimwood from Across the Pond, well, Across the Fantasy Pond is the name of his uh, his site. Uh, he'll be joining me from London, England at the bottom of the hour to get us straight with our uh, fantasy football decisions. Uh, 404-902-8104 is the text line. You can use that text line for anything else as well, no matter if you just want to tell me how much I suck. Feel free. Uh, same thing goes for the Facebook live stream. You can head on over to Facebook. Um, and leave your comments, questions, your criticisms, whatever you want to leave for me right below the streaming video on Facebook, or you can jump on inside my live interactive chat room here on Spreaker. Uh, all you got to do is be listening via Spreaker, obviously. Then you'll see a little thought bubble icon on your streaming player. Just click on that. It'll get you inside this live interactive chat room I got set up here. Also, make sure you guys are uh, signing up for your free Spreaker accounts that way. Oh, and following my show. Once you do that, follow my show. And that way, when the show goes live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 o'clock, you get an alert. You don't even have to remember it. You just get an alert. Uh, I guess it comes to your email or whatever, to your phone or whatever it does. I don't know how it it necessarily works. But you get an alert, let you know it's time to rock and roll. Also, make sure you tell your friends, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a damn friend about the One Mic with Big Mike show. Uh, As far as today goes, it's a regular Wednesday in in sports and sports world, man. man, Not a a whole lot of stuff uh, really caught my attention today. I sat here and wondered for a while, what the hell am I going to talk about? So if anybody got any, getting, got any ideas, stuff you might you might want to talk about, uh, if it pertains to your local team, pertains to uh, what's going on tonight in the National Basketball Association, what's going on tomorrow night in the National Football League, by all means, feel free, throw them at me. We'll, we'll see what sticks. Um, other than that, though, we got some, uh, we got on this day coming at the top of next hour, my feature that I do uh, every show where I give you guys some historical tidbits and factoids on things that happened on this particular day in sports history. I'll do that at the top of the hour, seeing as though I have a guest. My fantasy football guest will be joining me this week and next week uh, at the bottom of the first hour, 730 Eastern Time. If you're listening live, Rob Grimwood from across the fantasy pond. Um, as far as topical things, we're going to kind of like, you know, spray to all fields today, man. We're going to get into a bunch of stuff. Um, the World Series was last night. I watched the majority of the game last night. I, I took a little break around probably the fifth inning um, to watch some DVR. New, well, felt like when I came back, it was going to be a lot more baseball to watch. But surprisingly, last night, there wasn't. You know, game went by pretty soon. Um, I've got some news for you lottery players as well. I'm going to talk about that. Um, found me a new a new little show that I'm, that I'm checking out. So hopefully we can talk about that as well. 
um, more racism in the world of sports. How about that? <laughs> That's always a hot topic. I got some NFL things I want to get off my chest. And um, I guess we can start with the National Basketball Association. We got a couple games tonight uh, going on. The two on ESPN. One, you have the Heat and the Spurs. No Hassan Whiteside for the Heat. So you got to you, you, uh, no, no, uh, no Kawhi Leonard. Either. He's still out with that with that thigh injury. So you're going to have to deal with just uh, LaMarcus Aldridge. Good times. Fun, fun, fun. Good times. <laughs> um, and then later on, you got the Wizards and the Los Angeles Lakers, um, i.e. You get to see uh, 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 Johnny Wall go head up against uh, Lonzo Ball. It, it was something I talked about the other day. He's, he's going to get to see a real, real, real ass N- NBA point guard today, man. And we'll, We'll see how he fares against that. This isn't this isn't Patrick Beverly. This is a different type of monster. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, the other games tonight are going to be the Timberwolves and the Pistons. Uh, that's already going on. Um, the Denver Nuggets and the Charlotte Hornets. That's going on as well. The Houston Rockets and the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, that's going on as well. That kid, man, Mark Hill Fultz, is going to get shut down for a couple of games. Uh, he's been having problems with his shoulder, and people have been kind of going in on his on on that that revised free throw technique he's he's developed but it seems to be because of his shoulder injury he had to uh you know go to that that funky little you know free throw shooting shooting like 50 percent from the field after shooting 40 percent from three at the college level so you know something had to be wrong and also the fact that he's a 76ers rookie (laughs) something's definitely wrong but you still get to see ben simmons he and james harden go one-on-one that should be fun as hell uh joel Embiid. Uh, do his thing like like while all this talk has been happening about uh Lonzo Ball like that Ben Simmons thing is real man like these monsters that's playing point guard now it's it's kind of wow <laughs> you know what I mean like I might be about to jump on that on that bandwagon of people feeling like they need to expand the court they need to make the court bigger if these dudes is getting bigger these ball handlers are getting bigger these shooters are getting bigger I might be on that board on on that type of uh not make not not raising the goals any, but just like giving more space on the damn court. You know what I mean? Um, got the Cleveland Cavaliers, Suns, Dwayne Wade. I'll talk about that here in just a second. There's something that's been on my plate as pertaining to him for like the last I don't know three shows, and I still haven't talked about it. But they're taking on the Brooklyn Nets. That boy D'Angelo Russell's out there. The Brooklyn Nets are two and two. Like I'm just seeing this. Uh, the Pacers and the Oklahoma City Thunder going at it. Paul George heading back to his old stomping ground. Victor Oladipo for the Pacers. They got a big win last night. Who'd they beat last night? The Timberwolves, like 130 to something? Yeah, they, they pushed it in on somebody. Um, Utah Jazz and the Phoenix Suns, who's having their whole little situation out there. The Grizz and the Mavericks uh, going at it. The Raptors and the Golden State Warriors later on tonight. Uh, so, yeah. It's NBA season, man, if you guys ain't with it. I know some of you guys and girls talk about not watching the NBA until after football season is over. Well, ain't no football tonight. Or, or like, wait until, uh, you say, the official, the unofficial start of the NBA season is, is around Christmas. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I've told you guys this before. I'm very, very intrigued about what's going on uh, during this NBA season. All right. Let's start, let's start with, with, my, huh, with my takes, my hot takes. On what we're going to see at about 10 o'clock tonight. I guess it's at 10 o'clock, right? Where am I at? Yeah, 10.30. 10.30 tonight. So if you guys want to check this game out, you're going to need that DVR. Stay your ass up late if you're on the East Coast. 10.30, you got to get to see the Washington Wizards. They're heading to L.A. And as has become expected, man, your man, LeVar Ball, he wants to steal the show. You know what I mean? He wants to be, he wants to be the show. And he's, you know, he and Martin Gortat, had this thing out homie saying his team or his son not the team but his son isn't going to lose twice in one week all right you know what i mean that that's all fine and good like that type of stuff doesn't even need to be said in my opinion and on the other end of that you know martin gortat is telling you know who him that john wall is going to torture him and now he's bringing another dude into the to the fold like john wall is established man like John Wall don't even need to stoop to this, to this stuff about you know what he's going to do, and he did though, you know, because I mean it's social media, and apparently everyone has to reply. It's like one of the unwritten rules: you have to reply. He says he's not going to show this kid any mercy tonight, which puts a little bit of pressure on him to go out there and and ball, you know, which you know that's really never an issue with John Wall, but 
as a guy who still doesn't really have the most consistent. He's still a very streaky shooter from the outside. You know, he could have one of those nights, you know, where the, the shots not, just not falling. But then there are those nights where like the other night, like John Wall, I forgot who they was playing. But that, that dude just kept racking people up, like going to the rack, banging on cats. That that once again. Is a different monster than Patrick Beverly. Like Patrick Beverly has really one objective when he gets on the court. He want to get under your skin. He want to play like hard nosed defense, but he's not going to really challenge you on the other side of the court. John Wall is that plus some. This is a guy who says he wants to be the best two way guard in the NBA. Now, someone who comes out and says that is not going to take it easy on a defensive end. So we'll get to see. You know, this ain't the this ain't the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> I mean, this ain't that. This is a real ass NBA point guard and, you know, kind of a real NBA team. They're, they're going to be a contender out there in the East, especially with the injury of Gordon Hayward. That kind of that kind of boosts everyone else up a little, you know, half a step to a step. Them, Toronto, it kind of boosts them up a little bit uh, as, as, as far as how this Eastern Conference is going to play out. So I'm I'm lightweight excited about watching this one one mainly because I haven't really watched this kid Lonzo Ball play like I've seen him play in bits and pieces like last year in the tournament uh, I've seen him play um, I didn't even see the game against the Clippers I saw the highlights of the games versus the Clippers and I thought they were funny the way they were you know cut together and pieced together but I haven't seen him play as a professional outside of uh, of the summer league so I'm excited to see this kid play and and see what all the fuss is about because like I said before like I don't look at this kid. And see, you know, wow, he didn't wow me by just, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the eye test. But people seem to love his his basketball acumen, the way he sees the court. Uh, and then I'll never, I'll never, ever, 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 ever love that shot of his. It just seems like one of those things. Like, there's certain things, man, that there are. The reason they've been done the way they've been done for so long, because there's a right way to do it. You know, and when you start doing that, I'm going to shoot it from... I'm going to be right-handed, but shoot the ball from the left side of my face. That just seems like a, a thing that, that that's unsustain that's not sustainable in the NBA at a professional level. You know what I mean? And it seems like it's one of those things that can't be done consistent consistently once you once you get fatigued. You know what I mean? Like you like the way Steph shoots or the way Klay Thompson shoots, those cats are like machines. It's the same shot, the same release every time. Like Clay, Clay Thompson has shot, has shot bricks, has shot air balls. But when it leaves his hand, I don't know about y'all, it looks to me like it's going in every time, every single time. And when you see a dude like that, and he can get on those those tirades where he scores like thirty something points, or like sixty something points in three quarters, thirty something in a quarter, like that's because his shot is so consistent. And once the field gets locked in. It's going the 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 rim might as be might as well be the size of a hula hoop at that point. With that Lonzo ball shot, I'm not a fan, man. I'm I'm just you know I, I have to see it to believe it. I have to see it see it work on on a consistent basis uh, for me to be a believer in it. And then to be honest with you, I might still not be. That's just that's straight up. I, I still might not be. Um, what else did I want to say about this game? Um. Nothing like I say, man. It's not really a lot for me to talk about today. Like, I'm the guy who likes to talk about things after they happen. I'm not a prognosticator. I'm not a predictor of what's going to happen. I like to talk. I like to see things happen, and then you know, give my opinion on what I've already seen. Like people who like to start giving opinions on things they haven't even seen yet, I think is idiotic. Um, shout out to my man. I am no dose. He's up in here saying he's watching the NBA. Yeah, my dude is watching the NBA. Well, part of that is because you're boycotting the NFL. So you know, as far as you know, what's left. It's kind of there. You know what I mean? Uh, he's in the live interactive chat room. You guys can join him in there. I was asking earlier before you got on. Uh, I am no doze. Uh, what, like, what, what is it that people want to talk about? What, what are people talking about today? What, what do you want to talk about? Because I'm kind of like everywhere with mine. Um, this kid, uh, Miritich, the kid that got his face beat in by, by Bobby Porter or Portis. <laughs> they saying the, the, like the bull saying ain't nobody heard from this dude. He ain't returning calls. He ain't returning texts. They thinking that dude might leave the country and just go go back to Europe and play basketball. <laughs> See, yeah, you can't. If if that's really the case, you can't be on my team, cause like you can't get your ass whipped and then run and not talk to nobody and leave and go, you know, leave the country. That can't be a thing. If the, if that's how you re react to getting your ass whooped, because here's the thing, it wasn't a situation where. Like homeboy just caught him off guard. From my understanding, they was pushing and shoving. You know, they was going back and forth. 
So if uh, I said this, I said this the day it happened or the day after it happened or whenever that was, that if you just thought it was going to be, you know, we're going to push and shove for a little bit, then the rest of our teammates going to come in here and break it up. Well, you were sadly mistaken. You shouldn't have assumed that. And I always talk about you can't assume somebody else's reaction to your action. Like you want to push and shove and talk tough. Bobby Portis wanted to put he wanted to put the pause on somebody. And that somebody happened to be you and your face just couldn't hold up <laughs> to the punch. And your whole face broke to, to the point you had to go to the hospital. And now it looks as though from the hospital you will be going back. I don't know where his home country is. Because I think he was up for um, contract renewal at the end of the year. Both of them, as a matter of fact. And they were both competing for the same position. I think that's where some of the contention came from. Well, shout out to Bobby Portis. Looks like you got your position, homie. <laughs> you know, Debo this dude out of a position. Yeah, And yes, I am the bad guy who will laugh at stuff like this. Because, yeah, you come back. I mean, Bobby Portis, he gave a little apology as whatever, whatever happened. You know, whatever you think about the apology. Yeah, he gave it. <laughs> and, you know, I think I still think this kid uh, Miritich needs to apologize to him too for making him whoop his ass. You know what I mean? For not giving a fair fight, walking up on him, knowing he can't fight. Um, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> uh, so I am no those is like me. He's like, look, ain't much been going on in the sports world. Not really. Um, other than the fact that I guess ESPN has the Cowboys ranked number five in their power rankings. Yeah, guess who doesn't care? This guy, all that power ranking stuff and all that, uh, all that crap about freaking, you know, who I, I saw, I saw an AP poll, an NFL in AP poll today while I was reading. <laughs> and I was like, this can't be real. And it was from Fox Sports, like a legitimate sports publication, an AP poll for the NBA, for the NFL. Y'all got to stop. Y'all got to stop. And I know the reason they do it because they say it like on, on TV. When you look at TV, we know how much you guys love lists. I don't. I hate them. You know, just stupid stuff for people to banter about. People who don't want to read like long form things. You know what I mean? Like people just want to like, oh, there's a list. Where's my team at? Well, now I'm pissed. They're too low. They're not number one. Miss me with it. Um, that is a story. David, like he's saying, uh, David Stern saying he's all right with the puff puff pass in the in, in the NBA. Yeah, no doubt. Might as well. Like the in, the NBA is trying to prove a point about how progressive they can be on things and kind of really on the low, like lightweight shame the NFL, you know, they kicking people like they kicking people out the league. I just saw today, Randy Gregory is trying to get back in the league. Josh Gordon, uh, the NFL sack leader, Demarcus Lawrence. He got suspended a couple of times for the, for the stickiest of the icky. Meanwhile, <laughs> David Stern, former commissioner, the dude who was all about, you know, uh, 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 discipline and all these things. It's like, yeah, why not? Let them smoke. I'm gonna tell you guys what he said here in just a second too. Um, where is it? Okay, Mr. Stern, and he makes sense of what he's saying. You know what I mean? Um, he's saying removing the marijuana from the league's list of banned substances. Like, yeah, why not, man? You know, um, you got dudes talking about like, what? What? Who was it? It was Jack, Stephen Jackson. <laughs> it was like he was so high on the court one day. I heard a story of um, I heard uh, what's his name? Bill Simmons. Tell a story the other day about him being at the game, watching the game high, and him because he was high, he recognized who else was high, and he looked out. He said KG and somebody else. He was like, "Oh, those dudes are baked." <laughs> yeah, man, whatever, man. Like no one's gonna get hurt, you know. Little dudes, you know, getting blazed up before the game. If anything, it just help them relax. That jump shot be a lot smoother. It didn't happen that way in the case of Stephen Jackson. He said he was everywhere with the jump shot. Like, he got some of that real, some of that new new that he wasn't used to. So anyway, David Stern, I'm now at the point where personally I think marijuana probably should be removed from the banned list. Guess what I think? I think David Stern got a little bit of that uh, in him. He was like, yeah, this is hot. <laughs> and and he, he's meeting with, he, he's messing with Al Harrington. I don't know if you guys remember that story that I, that I hit. Um, phew, that might have been like a year ago. Al Harrington got his grandmama on the weed because she was like mad. You know, she was in a lot of pain and stuff and her eyes was messing with her and she couldn't read her Bible and stuff. And he had to really convince grandma, you know, once she like, well, once she got the pain got so, um, so intense, she just kind of broke down. It's like, all right, whatever, whatever, whatever you got, if you think it's going to help me, you know, hook me up. And he did. And now my, my guy smokes weed with his grandma. Holla at that. <laughs> Holla at Nana. Yeah. And now she's, her, her pain has subsided. She can read her Bible. Uh, Al, Al Harrington, I saw him on TV today on, on uh, Diesel and Marrow. 
talking about he got like a cream, you know, he got a, a CBD. I think it's a CBD cream um, that he rubs on his joints because he played in that big three league. He said, man, he need to ice his knees no more after after the first day. You know, he started giving it to other players and they kind of, you know, swear by it. And he's he's trying to get it and market it now. So it, it's becoming big business. And if you. If you don't get on it now, especially with these sports leagues, you'll get left behind. You know what I mean? Like I've I've invested some money in, in a couple of um, marijuana based companies. It hadn't panned out for me because I didn't do it right. But I was trying. I tried to get on, man, but it didn't work. So anyway, David Stern goes on goes on to say, I think there's a universal agreement that marijuana for medical purposes should should be completely legal. My God. He also says um, some of our players came to us and said players were high coming into the game. And that's when they began to kind of like, you know, put the chokehold on the rules and make the rules a little bit harder. They still not that hard. Like in the NBA, you got to get busted for weed like five times for something to happen to you. You know what I mean? Publicly, like suspension and all that kind of stuff. So it's still not where the the NFL is. But, you know, he, he decided that that's when they were going to get a little bit more you know, strict on the policy or whatever. Um sorry i kind of i missed where i missed where i was um he talked about guys who play in states where it's legal like washington like uh the denver nuggets like there is no team in, in portland or oregon right anymore or the portland trailblazers i think portland i think weed is legal in portland as well uh the california teams as well it feels to me though that would give those teams if I ain't if I'm not tripping that would give those teams a little bit of an advantage when it comes to free agency though. Like if you can just play for the Nuggets and you can you can spark an L anytime you want to, I'm probably more likely to sign with that team than maybe the Hawks. I mean that might be the case anyway, but you get what I'm saying. Instead of a team that ain't really for it, the Charlotte Hornets or whoever these 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 Bible Belt teams at all restrictive in the in the way they look at uh, uh marijuana yeah it seems like that would give these teams a little bit more of a uh, of a recruiting advantage if you want to put it that way um the nfl i think is still behind my man um you guys you guys have heard sean smith on my on my show before talking about blazing before the games or being being high in the games uh guys like eugene monroe former nfl offensive tackle he's big into the weed um ruben drones has been on the show before he's involved with an organization like a lot of these dudes man have just moved i think al harrington moved to colorado to continue his business uh in 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 the in the marijuana market man so as far as sports goes like that's why i hate with the nfl man what happens with a lot of these guys man and the way they're 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 stigmatized like they they start like if a dude get popped for weed in the nfl Listen to the listen to like the, the commentators, listen to people who like do this, who talk about sports on, on radio and stuff. They talk about these dudes like they're heroin addicts. Well, it seems as though there's a cry for help and you know, the young man, he doesn't have to ruin his life over this. I'm like, damn dog, it's weed. This isn't crystal meth. This is weed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they they, 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 they they stigmatize it to the point where when somebody does bring up the, the point of it having medicinal benefits or it has anti-inflammatory benefits. All the things that someone who runs into other people for a living would need. You get guys like Booger McFarlane that say, um, man, it, it may, it may, you know, I don't know. And as soon as you say, I don't know. And you, you're talking like matter of factly about something. I'm going to stop listening to you. So he's like, it, it may have some, but, and I, and I don't know, but most, most of these guys just want to get high. So what? The NFL don't have no problem with, with guys going home and, and pouring themselves a drink out of the practice. They don't have no, no, you can, you can argue that doesn't have any medicinal benefit, but dudes just want to get, you know, want, want to take the edge off or want to get drunk or whatever. So with that excuse or the excuse that, well, we don't want to send kids the wrong, the wrong message when every other commercial is for beer, when you watching either a college or professional game over the weekend, you can't have that argument either. It's just like I was looking at uh, Real Sports last night. He was talking about gambling in the sports. And now how, hip, how, how hypocritical uh, the NBA, the NHL, all these sports organizations are. Once again, the NBA is at the forefront of this. Adam Silver's like, yeah, I don't care. You should make gambling legal. It's already happening. And everything they do in sports, well, most a lot of the things they do in sports are to cater to uh, sports betters. The injury report, things of that nature. Those things are to cater to 
uh, sports betters. Meanwhile, though, no, we can't have that. And part of the reason is it's the same reason that weed isn't illegal, isn't legal across the country. They got to find the, the government got to find a way to get their piece of it. Much like the NFL, they got to find a way not only to get their piece of it. They want to make sure they get the bigger, the biggest piece of it. And the the fact of the matter is sports betting, gambling has been around long before professional sports has gotten to this, you know, to this level. And I, and Brett Musburger made a very good point last night while I was watching. When um they start saying like part of the reason the NFL tries to state is that it, they don't want to get into a situation where the uh, the integrity of their players gets challenged. And Brett Musburger was like, uh, no, this isn't the 1920s or 30s anymore. You had like the Black Sox scandal and all this. These players are making way too much damn money to risk it <laughs> because some dude picks up the phone and was like, hey, LeBron, I want you to make sure your team only wins or loses by five tonight. LeBron's like, dude, you, you going to pay me a billion dollars to do that? If not, lose my number. There's too much money in it, too much money that they're getting paid from the leagues, too much endorsement money that these guys are getting. These dudes are bathing in money. It would be ridiculous for, for some you know sports bookie or some someone to be able to strong arm some professional athlete in today's day and age. And, and Brett Musburger made the point that these dudes are using an excuse that would have only held up many, many, many a year ago. But it all... It all boils down to the money. You know what I mean? Like once, once the NFL finds a way to get what they feel like is their fair share of things, you'll we'll all see things change. Uh, I got my man Rob Grimwood coming up in a couple of minutes. If you guys got any fantasy football questions, make sure you text them to me at 404-902-8104. You can also leave them below my uh, streaming video on Facebook at One Mike with Big Mike. Or jump on in my live interactive chat room here on Spreaker by clicking that little thought bubble icon on your streaming player. And you can uh, ask me your questions there as well. Um, LeBron is playing point guard now because Derrick Rose again is out. Of course, Isaiah Thomas is out. Uh, Tristan Thompson is back in the starting lineup. And guess what? Dwayne Wade is hurt. He's got a knee contusion or something like that. And you know what I didn't get a chance to bring up for the last two shows? Um I guess I'll ask the question first because I'm gonna ask I'm gonna <laughs> ask Rob this too. You guys ever heard of dead bugging? If you watch um, LeBron's sitcom Survivor's Remorse on on Stars, um, yeah, dead bugging was a was a topic that was brought up in in that show. Um, yeah, if you don't know what it is, I don't know if you can Google this. Google it. Google dead bugging. Um, and if you don't know what it is, again, you might not even have to Google it because apparently Gabrielle Union uh, dead bugs Dwayne Wade. So if you know this story already, you should unless you've been living under a rock for the last, I don't know, five days or so. Um, yeah, that's a little bit too much, man. Like for, for, for forever in a day, man, you know, there's been this permanent sign on my bunkie says exit only. Yeah, like this new age stuff that folks is into, like sexually. I look back and I look back in, in my day, man, when you when you think like, yeah, I'm a freaking MFR. Not so much. <laughs> I'm I'm probably a prude in in with the with the um the standards that's being set today. Yeah, man. Uh whew. <laughs> like stuff is stuff is wild. And you can see it in the in the actions of dudes. Like if you ever if you if you've seen Twenty One Savage lately with Amber Rose you know, 100%. She's doing some wild, ridiculous, just ungodly things to that boy, man. <laughs> like she got that dude turned all the way out. But if that's what it is, that's what it is. You know what I am, no those I wanted to bring up to you also, dude. I found out over the last couple of days, like, I'm not the only one with this, um, what did you call it, the man crush on Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. Yeah, man. Like, folks is on this. Folks are really on this whole uh, this, this, this Giannis train, man, because that dude is unreal. And people understand that he's still an untapped resource. Like he still hasn't, he still hasn't even reached close to what he could possibly be. You know, well, barring he stays injury free and all those things, of course. Um, and then to this year, he's on a mission because his dad just died and everything. So yeah, it's about to get serious for some cats. 
Um, we can talk about that a little bit later, though. That and some more NBA stuff. I got some more NFL stuff for you guys as well. But now it's time to take a break, come back and talk some fantasy football, get my guy uh, Rob Grimwood on the line. So once again, if you got any questions for Rob, uh, any lineup questions, you want to figure out a lot of buys this week. So if you got to got to figure out who you need to uh, get the fill in for some guys that are on buys, send them to me at 404-902-8104, 404-902-8104. That's the number you want to text them to. You can also hit me up on Facebook under my Facebook live stream at one Mike with big Mike. You can also uh, jump on in my live interactive chat room. And leave your questions there as well. Plenty of different ways to do so. This is the One Mike with Big Mike Show. I'm here, man, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 7 on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, and on TuneIn. I'll be right back. I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike Show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one mic. Every year, millions of teens work to earn extra money and learn important skills. But certain jobs can jeopardize your health or well-being. So know the rules. First, the hours you can work. If you're 14 or 15, you can only work for three hours on a school day and for eight hours on a non-school day. Also, if you're 14 or 15, you may not work before 7 a.m. or after 7 p.m., except from June 1st through Labor Day, when you can work later, up to 9 p.m., Next, and really important, hazardous jobs. If you're under 18, jobs such as roofing, operating dangerous equipment, and most driving jobs are off limits. So work safe. For more information, call the U.S. Department of Labor's toll-free helpline at 1-866-4-US-WAGE or visit youthrules.dol.gov. A message from the U.S. Department of Labor. Now, 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 back to one mic. What are we waiting for? Let's get to it. With Big Mike. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the One Mike with Big Mike show here on a hump day. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, by the way, this is going to be the final show of the week. I got some personal stuff to take care of uh, on Friday. So I'll catch you guys today and then catch you guys again on Monday here on the One Mike with Big Mike show live on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app, as well as on TuneIn. Don't forget, the show is also available on demand on all three of those outlets, as well as on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and YouTube. And I got the Facebook live stream pumping right now, so you can head on over to Facebook at One Mike with Big Mike and check me out there. It's that time of the show. I told you guys, 404. 902-8104 902-8104 I thought I had my man uh, Rob Grimwood on the line But apparently he had to drop off for a second um, Let me address something real quick While we wait on him I am no dozer Is talking about the way I talk about the Greek freak Because I, I said he's Greeky And he's freaky He's both He's a Greek He's a Greek freak of a man You know what I mean And I, and I enjoy watching him play basketball Man, He's about to go for I think he's already done four straight uh, 30 point games in a row and it's like this dude can do that without a jump shot it's possible straight up that cat might lead the league in scoring without being able to shoot the three-pointer consistently in this league and at some point somebody's gonna get a hold of that dude and show him how to get busy from behind that arc and when that happens man it's just game over all right so as we wait here for my man Rob to get online, we're we're skyping him in, and he's way across the way in um, London, England. You still got time to get your questions in at four zero four nine zero two eighty one zero four. Um, some of the other stuff I had going on as far as the NBA is concerned. Um, shout out to Andre Drummond, man. You guys know Andre Drummond up in up in uh, Detroit. Um, Andre Drummond hasn't to the point to at this point far as I know, missed a free throw yet. Andre Drummond has thought, shot like 30-something percent from the stripe over the last couple of years of his career. Uh, I think he went like 60, 16, I think, for 20 in the uh, in the preseason, and now hasn't, hasn't missed one yet. Let me tell you something, man. This is why. This is another reason, man, 
that I have to that, that it makes me sound like I hate on Dwight Howard. Because when people start saying, like, you know, once you get that to that point, you know, there is no you, you can't get yourself better at shooting free throws. Well, I, I saw Blake Griffin do it. I'm watching Andre Drummond do it. I know it, it, it's through a couple of games and it's a small sample size, but still he, he's even talked about the things that he's done in order to get, you know, get himself uh, situated to where he's more comfortable shooting the free throws like that. You got to do like Dwight Howard. It's just like, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm good. I can't, like, I can't deal with that, man. Like, cause now when you're in a situation where the league has passed you by and you still don't have a, 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 a valuable skill to speak of, and then you can't, you can't offer anything in crunch time. If you get filed, people can still intentionally file you and things of that nature. It's ridiculous. All right, let's see if we can uh, see if we can connect with the homie Rob Grimwood. Now, Rob, you there, man? No apologies necessary, man. Oh, I got to take you off mute. All right, there he is. No apologies necessary, my man. Um, <laughs> I got my man. Uh, how, are you? How, how, how are you? Are you well? I'm good, my man. I can't complain. Well, I could complain, but you don't care. <laughs> 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 you guys make sure you're following Rob on Twitter. Um. I have it here at FF Brit Baller. He's over there in Britain and at Fantasy Pond. Um, first of all, I want to ask you something about these damn these damn London games that the NFL is pushing over over there. Um, they yeah. they sell it to us over here like you guys really enjoy those games that, you know, it's the talk of the town over there. What really is the attitude for people in your neck of the woods when it comes to those damn London games? I'll, I'll be honest, Mike. It, it really is the talk of the town. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the NFL is really uh, in since the international series has been going maybe ten, twelve years now. I don't know exactly, but it really has taken off. And every every year, there's more and more fans. I mean, the two venues at the moment, Wembley and Twickenham, they're, they're sold out. You can't get tickets. Um, if you get tickets, you're, you're paying well over the odds on StubHub or wherever. Uh, you know, it's it's really really taken off, and it, it's it's great. It's really great, and there is a big buzz about it. So, would you guys be? Because they they talk about all the time the Jaguars actually becoming like the London Jaguars. Is that something that would that you think would, would be sustainable over there? I uh, I really hope not. I'll be honest. Um, I I love the fact that there is games over here, the international series, but. I am not a fan of the thought of a team being permanently over here. Mm. It's, in my opinion, it's it's America's game, and I think it will be spoiled if you take the game out of America. You know, like it's all very well and good having the occasional game over here. You know, like I said, we've got the fan base now, and everyone loves it. But permanently, no, thank you. We, not because we don't want it. It's because I think it will be a bit detrimental towards the NFL. I hope Roger Goodell hears that. Anyway, let's talk some <laughs> fantasy football, man. That's what you're here to do. Talk fantasy football with us. We got a couple. We got a bunch of buys this week. We got Arizona on by. We got Green Bay, Jacksonville, the Rams, the Giants, the Titans, all on by. So we got to talk about yes. what needs to be done waiver wise yes. to supplement some of our fantasy teams uh, as we try to get through this one, two, three, six game, sixteen by week. What do you got for me? Okay, well, um, at quarterback. You're, you need to play the, the streamers this week. Obviously, we've had so many injuries throughout the NFL this year. It's been really tough on us, on the fantasy community. We've lost some big players. Quarterback, you know, we've lost the, the main guy in Aaron Rodgers. If you've got a guy on buys, I've got Marcus Mariota on buy in a lot of leagues this this week. So I'm streaming Andy Dalton. Um, he's available on most waiver-wise, and he's got a great matchup against my Indianapolis Colts. Unfortunately, we're not so great at the moment against any position, and quarterback is, is one of those where it seems to be very productive. So Andy Dalton, for me, I, I don't particularly like Andy Dalton season-wide. Um, I don't think... He, I mean, he showed it last week. He's, he's not a, he's not in a very good situation at the moment. That O-line is, is horrendous. Right. But this week, Indianapolis offer very little uh, defensively. And I think An uh, Andy Dalton can exploit that. Um, likewise, running back, again, it, I, I don't want to go down the path of just choosing Bengals because they're, they're playing Indianapolis. But Joe Mixon, 
for me, I understand off-season he's had some issues and it affected his draft stock and whatnot, but a lot of people are, are sort of saying this guy has got the pedigree to be one of the best running backs. Well, he's to saying come it through. too. Kind of pissing Marvin like, Lewis off a little bit. Marvin Lewis telling yeah. the kid he needs to mature a little bit before he starts complaining about playing time. Yeah, yeah. But I think this is an opportunity for him to put his money where his mouth is because, again, Indianapolis are not great against the run. They're ranked in the bottom 10, um, sorry, in the bottom three against fantasy running backs, um, points given up. They give give up an average of 27.8 uh, PPR points per game. Their fifth worst in giving up rushing yards and they are the worst giving up rushing touchdowns they've given up eight touchdowns this year so far so joe mixon for me this is the week that it's his chance to really put like i said put his money where his mouth is and prove that he is the talent that he says he is and what analysts and scouts have said he is right. uh, this is the week so i'm going to trust him i'm going to i'm going to stick him in uh, for this week and hopefully he he goes off now Heading into the wide receiver section, um, for my starts this week, I've got Keenan Allen from the Los Angeles. I keep saying San Diego, and I I, I stand by it. I'm going to keep saying San Diego because yeah, no know, one cares anyway. <laughs> the people in LA don't even care. So yeah, you can call them, you can call them the Portland Chargers if you want to. It doesn't matter. So Keenan Allen's got a juicy matchup this week against the Pats. It's away from home. Uh, it's not always the best uh, stadium to go to, Gillette Stadium, to uh, for for anybody really. But this year in particular, New New uh, New England have been dreadful uh, defended in the past. It's been a bit better the last couple of weeks, but I still think that Keenan Allen, being the main guy in that Chargers offense, is going to get a lot of volume this week. So if you've got him. Uh, on your fantasy teams, definitely put him in. Um, but just looking on the waiver wire, I've got a few wide receivers which I'm really keen on on the waiver wire this this week. Um, Jordan Matthews is one that stands out for me. I like his talent. I liked him at Philadelphia, and his a uh, Buffalo team where he's the main sort of name as a receiver, especially now Clay's gone down. So he's only 26.2% owned in ESPN leagues anyway. So Jordan Matthews is a guy that you can plug straight in because he's going to play this week. I believe he's back from his thumb injury. Um, Josh Doxson is another one from Washington, 15.9% owned. He's got more and more used over the last couple of weeks. Terrell Pryor seems to be a bit of a no-show, which is surprising a lot of people. Um, Josh Doxson, that job's his for the taking. And Gruden seems very happy with him and keen to get him more touches as well so look look out for for josh doxson to plug in if you've got some some wide receiver troubles this week um and tight ends um i've got one written down here from the waiver wire that's that's uh indianapolis's jack doyle because i think that he is the 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 light at the end of the very dark tunnel for indianapolis yeah, he's a, a young tight oj howard man that's who i just picked up Oh no, I love I love OJ Howard. I'm a really big fan of OJ Howard. The only thing with him is Cameron Brait scares me, man. Yeah. Because because yeah. because Brait is great, and you know, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And Jameis loves throwing to Cameron Brait. So OJ Howard's got all the talent in the world. I mean, physically, he's a he's a dominant. He's great. I think he's a very. I wouldn't know when to plug him in, just because of Brait at the moment. But I don't. I don't hate it, Mike. I don't hate it at all. Well, yeah, I don't have any other choice. My my, my guy, uh, Melvin Ingram's on by this week, so I had to find somebody, and he was the he was the best of the of the the non uh, claimed tight ends. I don't know what's going on in my okay. league. Like it seems like everybody has like five of each position, and there's only like there's only five uh, five reserves on each team, and I, I don't understand what's happening. But I'm gonna oh, figure wow. it out. Yeah, I'm gonna figure okay. it out. Okay, just another couple of names at the tight end position that might be available in the waiver wire. Um, Austin Hooper's got a very good matchup this week against the Jets. He was disappointing last week. I think he comes back for a bounce back. I think the Atlanta Falcons are, are pretty pretty miffed what happened last week. They're not very happy. I think they're going to come back with a and with a bounce. And I think Austin Hooper could could get some some targets this week. And fading that one that possibly is on your waiver wire as well is Tyler Croft. Again, I. It's another Bengal, I know, but India again are not very good against tight ends. So Tyler Croft has been catching touchdowns. 
Uh, he is Rob Grimwood from across the fantasy pond. Make sure you guys are following him on Twitter at FF Brit baller and at fantasy pond. Um, talk to me about some guys that, uh, even in a week like this one, that if you have a better option, their, their match, their matchups are just so bad. You probably want to, uh, keep them on the bench if you can. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I might surprise some people by saying this and uh, it's a bit of a hot take, but bear with me. I've got Kareem Hunt, the, the Kareem, the dream as he's called in, uh, over there at KC, he's had a he's had an incredible start to the season. The rookie, I this week, this week only, I'm benching him, and the reason why is is because he's going up against uh, the Denver Broncos, who, as we know, have got a pretty good defense, but in particular, they're very good at defending the run. This year, they have allowed absolutely zero touchdowns to running backs um, through rush, rushing touchdowns, that is. They've allowed two through receiving, but no rushing touchdowns, and they've only allowed 381 yards of rushing, which is second best in the league. So I like Kareem Hunt. He's been absolutely brilliant this year. The touchdowns have dried up a little bit. It's been four weeks now. We've had no touchdowns. Going up against a defense that doesn't allow touchdowns, it's uh, it's it's a tough ask this week. So, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because if he does prove me wrong this week, then Kareem Hunt is a plug and play matchup proof guy that you can stick in any time. But for now, just thinking statistically, looking ahead at this game, it doesn't bode well for Kareem Hunt, and this might be the week that he becomes unstuck. Um, another guy. Who, sorry, go ahead. No way, you got it. Uh, another guy that I think is worth just sitting on your bench this week, is at the tight end position. Um, a guy who's been fantastic since he's come back in from his suspension, is, is, uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins from the Jets. I'm a big ASJ fan. I was a fan of him when he was at the Bucks. Uh, I think he's really, really talented and is, is absolutely huge, the guys. He's so physical. But he goes up against the Falcons, and you know, like I've alluded to already, the Falcons are going to play angry. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, chances for the Jets to to really dominate the Falcons like they've been able to do the last few weeks. So ASJ takes a bit of a step back for me. I would bench him if I've got a better option. Well, some would say that the Falcons should have played angry last week, and we saw how that turned out. Anyway, yeah. hey Rob, do you know what <laughs> do do you know what dead bugging is? Is that a thing in in in, in England? Dead bugging. I have not heard this, no. Okay, you should probably look look it up when we get through talking in the Urban Dictionary. It's going to be a, okay. a little bit of a surprise for you. Or it may not be a surprise for you, <laughs> depending on depend on what you're into. Uh, anyway, <laughs> talk to me about some uh, some sleepers this week. Some sleepers this week. Okay, um, uh, I really like Wendell Smallwood. Uh, this guy is uh, running back from... Philadelphia. He blows hot and cold a little bit. He's got the Garrett Blunt there as well, who seems to take the goal line carries. But again, the matchup this week, he's got the San Francisco 49ers, who are the worst at defending running backs in fantasy football. They give up 32.1 PPR points per game, five touchdowns over the season. I think Wendell Smallwood could be a sneaky play this week because they're they're likely to share the carries um, in Philadelphia. And Wendell Smallwood has proved that he can do something. This is the best stage he's going to have this year because he's going against the worst defense against the run. So I think Wendell Smallwood is a good start this week. Um, Yeah, I've already mentioned uh, uh, Jordan Matthews, who I really like. So, yeah, this uh, listen, Carson Wentz, for me... is the best young quarterback in this league. And I understand he's maybe not a sleeper, but you'll find that people have situations where if they have Carson Wentz, they've likely got another quarterback on their roster. So they've they've got a Matt Ryan or Russell Wilson or Ben Roethlisberger. This is the week that you stick Carson Wentz in and you keep him in because he proved uh, on Monday night how good he is. I mean, that little... That little run that he did, that he just looked like he got sacked and just just carried on going. I mean, this guy is special. I really, really like him. He's got a good matchup against the 49ers. Okay, he's maybe not a, a really deep sleeper there, but if you've got uh, a selection 
issue where you don't know if you've got a, another quarterback but you're unsure of, Carson Wentz is your guy. Yeah, man, my quarterback situation sucks. Also, you know what I meant? I'm glad I'm glad you're in. I'm glad I'm, I'm thinking about this. Shout out to you, man, because the last time we talked, you told me not to be afraid of Todd Gurley, man. And I took mm-hmm. your advice and I drafted him. And, and Todd yeah. Gurley's been probably my most consistent guy. You also talked about um, talked about uh, uh, Jared Goff, a guy who I was really down on. But Jared Goff seems to be showing up, him and his new offensive coordinator slash head coach out there doing yeah. big things, man. So, yeah. All right, um, before – I get you out of here, man. I got to get some of these. Um, I got to get these uh, listener questions to you. Um, the okay. first one. Let me go to my chat room real quick before I lose it. Uh, Josh Doxson, Devonte Parker, or Taylor Gabriel? Which one of those you like? I'm um, I'm going with Josh Doxson just because the upside's there. Um, you know, like I said, he's gradually got better and better over the last few weeks. Jay Gruden seems to love him. Terrell Pryor's doing nothing. Jameson Crowder's doing nothing. Jordan Reed is, you know, is he? <laughs> exactly. So Josh Doxson, that's his job there for the taking, and he's getting better and better, and I can only see him getting better even more. Let me ask you about this Devontae Parker thing, though, because I think I have him on one of my – not one of my – I only have one team on my team. Um, with with Matt Moore being in instead of Jay Cutler, because Jay Cutler is a hot bowl of garbage, um, and you saw what Matt Moore was able to do last week. Is Devontae Parker's uh, uh, value as far as fantasy goes probably going up a little bit with Jay Cutler being out? Uh, yeah, I I haven't seen... I, I know Matt Moore played last year a few games when Tannehill went down by. I haven't seen enough of my own eyes to make a judgment. However, you can't... It's definitely not a down tick from Jay Cutler. Oh, right. like, <laughs> like you said, Jay Cutler is garbage. I mean, he was garbage at the Bears the last few years, and he's garbage this year so it's definitely not a down tick and Devonta Parker is a very very talented dude so I I don't think yeah I, I if anything he's going to get more utilized but he's injured at the moment I think he might play. I'm just trying to scroll down to see the latest injury news I think for he him practiced but, today limited practice yeah today, I think yeah I thought I saw that too so he might well be in this weekend I've got Devonta, Par- Devonta Parker in a couple of leagues and I'm I'm quietly confident that he's gonna he's gonna be quite he's gonna be fine he's gonna be a fine play for the rest of the season. Um, I've got here Jameis Winston, two guys who who kind of struggled. Jameis Winston versus the Panthers, or Andy Dalton versus those Colts you talked about. Yeah, well, I love Jameis Winston. I, I've I've been all about Jameis Winston all in the off season. I even bought a Jameis Winston jersey because every year I I buy a jersey of the the player that I love the most in fantasy. So. That's how much I love Jameis, but this week it's gonna have to be it's gonna have to be Andy Dalton just because of the matchup. Yeah, I got screwed on Jameis Winston. I actually drafted him, and then the hurricane came, and I, I, I'm a dude that only mm-hmm. plays one quarterback a week, so I had to drop him. Now I got Carson Palmer, or had Carson Palmer, I had oh, to cut yeah. him with the injury. Now I've got whatever that dude's name is. Is it Josh or Luke? One of those McCown boys, the one that's in in in, in New Jersey now with the Jets. One of those, Josh, yeah. Not, yeah, he's my quarterback now. So, yeah, pray for I don't him. hate it. I don't hate Josh. I don't hate Josh McCown at all, yeah, to be honest. He's it, playing all right, but he's still he's, a McCown. <laughs> he's not a Rodgers yeah. or a Brady. He's a McCown. No, yeah, you're quite right, and and it's likely that wheels are going to fall off sooner rather than later in in the in the Jet camp. I think. Um, but you never know. They've been they've been sneaky good this year. So you know, I don't hate McCown, but yeah. Don't know what to to advise you there. <laughs> yeah, I just Bye. got my fingers crossed. I'm finishing up finishing up here with my man Rob Grimwood from across the pond over in in, in London, England. Uh, he's from uh, across the across the fantasy pond. Make sure you guys follow him at FF Brit Baller or at uh, Fantasy Pond. If you don't get your questions in the day, you can also hit him up on social media, and I'm sure he'll oblige. Uh, I've got Kelvin Benjamin at Tampa mm. Bay or Michael Crabtree at Buffalo. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to go Calvin Benjamin just because I, I like Crabtree, but Buffalo have been really, really good uh, this year. Their defense, Buffalo's defense has been been incredible, actually. So I think that, uh, yeah, I'll go Calvin Benjamin just because he's, he's good. He's real good. And Cam seems to... Uh, Devin Funches has been is technically rank higher than him at the moment got more fantasy points but Calvin Benjamin's had a few injury issues but every time I seem to see the ball going in the air when I watch red zone 
it always ends up in in Benjamin's hands or going Benjamin's way. So, yeah, I think Benjamin's going to be the main guy going forward there. So I'd start him this week. All right, got a couple more for you. Doug Martin, who came back and ruined me as well because I had Jacquez Rogers, had to cut him. Doug mm-hmm. Martin versus the Carolina Panthers or Carlos Hyde at Philly. Philly have got um, – actually, this is a surprising stat that I dug out earlier, actually. So Philly rank number one in yards against. They've only given up 294 rushing yards, um, and they've only had 96 attempts against them uh, – through rushing plays so that indicates to me that teams are actually scared to run the ball against philly because they're so good and they've only given up three touchdowns too so i would um yeah i've got doug martin this week all right got a couple more here for you uh mm-hmm. russell wilson versus houston or deshaun watson on the other side versus or at seattle okay well for me this week um deshaun watson's actually my sit at quarterback just because i mean i don't doubt that Deshaun Watson is really good. He's, he's surprised everyone this year. If if you said to me that you were looking forward to Deshaun Watson and projecting what he was going to do, then you'd be a liar because no one expected him to do so well. Right. However, this is, I'm sure this is his hardest test. Seattle are no joke of a defense. They never have been, not for the last five, ten years anyway. Um, they're still really good. They've still got all the DBs, you know, your, your Shermans, yeah, cam chances it, it's gonna be tough it's, this is his biggest test yet it's at seattle uh i'm staying away from deshaun watson this week all right two more for you uh alvin Kamara versus chicago or on the other side again jordan howard at new orleans oh i love alvin Kamara and i loved his breakout game in london that really did surprise me um but Chicago, um, yeah, Chicago are, are sneaky okay against the running backs. I wouldn't say they're sneaky good. They're sort of mid-table against running backs. New Orleans are fairly bad against running backs. And Jordan Howard is, I think, the better talent. Uh, obviously, you've got that one year under his belt. And he, he they just feed him the ball nonstop. I mean, he's guaranteed to get 20 touches a game. So, Jordan Howard for me. All right. And finally, Stefan Diggs at Cleveland or DeAndre Hopkins once again at Seattle. Yeah, that's, that's another that's another tough one, real tough one. Stefan Diggs is coming back off an injury. I have seen an update tonight that he's back in in practice, I believe. So, and he has traveled to London, so he's likely going to play. I'd keep an eye on it because we saw a couple of weeks ago when New Orleans were in town, they had Willie Sneed with them with him with them uh, on his uh, quote unquote comeback game, but he didn't play. He was sort of a health uh, unhealth. He scratched it before the game started. So keep an eye on Diggs. If he plays, I'd take Diggs over Hopkins personally, just because again of the matchup at Seattle. It's tough for wide receivers. He's he's going to get more than likely he's going to get a lot of Sherman who doesn't give up a lot of yards. Um, that's really really tough. But if if Diggs is healthy, I'm leaning Diggs. No doubt. Appreciate your time, Rob. Hey, don't forget. No problem. Don't forget. We're going to talk next week. So you got yeah, to look up uh, dead bugging. Probably look look dead for it in the <laughs> Urban Dictionary, too. Dead bugging. And, uh, <laughs> okay, we'll, buddy. We'll discuss it next week. Appreciate your time, yeah. man. Is, is it okay if I just plug my website real quick? No doubt. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sh- I, no, it's fine. We're, we've got a new website. It's only just come up. It's www.acrossthefantasypond.com. I've got five writers who are writing for me, and the podcasts are on there. Uh, we've got weekly rankings and weekly articles, DFS plays for your fan duels and for your draft kings. It's all on there. It's well worth checking out. I've got some really good writers writing for me now. So, so yeah, well worth checking that out. No as well. doubt. I wish you'd have told me that earlier. Oh, you, you probably did, but I'm an idiot. So, yeah, we make no, sure I didn't. We, I didn't. We plug that constantly next week, man. So, I'll talk to you then. Thank you very much, Mike. Nice speaking to you, buddy. You got it. It's my man, Rob Grimwood. Like he said, make sure you check out his website, man, across the com. You guys can also follow him on social media. Uh, on Twitter at FF Brit Baller and at Fantasy Pond. Just found out the homie I am no dose getting busy in the fantasy football world this this year. It may be F real football, but that fantasy football will call you, boy. It's like it's like heroin. It's like po- pokey with the cocaine. The crack. It's just be calling me. Shout out to you, dog. Way to way to way to diversify. <laughs> Say F you on one side, but come back. I, I told y'all this, man, that the, the league is like heroin, man. It's like it's going to call you in some form or fashion, man. And 
you know, I, I ain't mad at you. It's just, you know, one of those things. The first step to recovery is, is what is it? Is admitting that there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> admitting that there's a problem, man, that you that you have an addiction. Um good man. Shout out to shout out to uh to Rob Grimwood. Have you guys, you, Big L, Big L's in the chat room, you guys uh know what know what dead bugging is? You 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 Googled it yet? Yeah, it's a it's a tough day, man. I'm I'm an old cat, man. I'm 40 years old, man, and it, like yeah, there's still things that 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 are coming up that are just becoming mainstream, I guess. You know, you know, have have leaped out of the world of pornography into like people's regular world. That's kind of it. it kind of just wears me out, man. Anyway, let's take a break. Top of the hour here on the One Mike with Big Mike show. We'll come back with um. <laughs> we'll come back with with on this day uh we'll, we'll wrap up the in the nba talk a couple uh, more topics in the nba i want to get to real quick uh jump into some nfl stuff and then we'll get the hell up out of here man go watch some world series baseball and some uh, nba basketball as well it is the one mike with big mike show i'm here live on spreaker.com uh the spreaker app as well as on tune in hold on I have one question for you. Do you or someone you know run a business that could benefit from additional exposure? The One Mike with Big Mike show is currently taking on new sponsors and advertisers. One Mike with Big Mike is currently syndicated across eight different online platforms. And your company's name could be heard and seen across all eight as well. Let's get to work. Please send all inquiries to Mike at OneMikeWithBigMike.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support. All I need is one Mike. Dear John. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you've left me no choice. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is really serious, and lately you seem to really not care. I've been there for you since day one, and I know you think I'm going to keep ticking. But no, my friend, I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to the good times? When we were more active and ate more healthy foods, and you checked on me every once in a while. Is that too much to ask? I don't want to leave, but unless you stop ignoring me, What else am I supposed to do? Remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart and don't let it quit on you. Doing the minimum to control your high blood pressure isn't doing enough. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. For help keeping yours at a healthy range, text PRESSURE to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. One mic. I'm back. It's the One Mic with Big Mike show. Live. There ain't no goddamn take. Interactive and on demand. One, <laughs> one mic. Yeah, a sports show. The best move of LeBron's career, man, was dragging his sweaty ball sack right across Draymond Green's the nap. The nape of his neck and getting that dude suspended and so much more. What's going on right now with Donald Trump? This is America. And it just it, it tickles me to death when I when white people are so shocked and appalled by it. What? It's the one mic with Big Mike show. Of course, it's like anything, like ammonia or you sniffing glue is gonna get you high. You've been warned. The one mic with Big Mike show start now. Here he is. He's real cocky, he's real loud mouth, he's real flamboyant. He don't he don't cow down to people. Big, Big Mike. Mike. And yes, we are officially over the hump as it pertains to this show. If you missed any of my man Rob Grimwood's great fantasy football advice, it's available for you and yours on demand on Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app. Tune in. iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and on YouTube. And don't forget, you can also check it out probably. Check out uh, more of his fantasy advice and some of the advice by some of his writers at across the fantasy pond.com follow me on twitter instagram like my facebook page at one mic with big mike where i'm streaming live video right now get involved in the show man text me at 404-902-8104 404-902-8104 you can also uh, leave your comments and questions and all those things right up under my live streaming video here on facebook or you can jump on in my live interactive chat room here on spreaker just click that little thought bubble icon you see to get you up in the building make sure you sign up for your free speaker accounts as well and while you're clicking things click that little heart icon to indicate that you like the show and those little share buttons to share me across your social media platforms um real quick before i get into on this day for my lottery players out there and i thought i lost my winning lottery ticket the other day my four dollar lottery ticket i found it though it was under the couch for some reason 
Um, there's some, ch- some changes coming to your, which one is this? To, to Mega Millions. Four changes to be exact. Um, the jackpots are about to get larger. So that's a good thing. Uh, the largest jackpot so far happened on March 30th, 2012. It was $640 million. Whew. Okay, the four changes real quick are these. Uh, largest starting jackpots. The Mega Million jackpot will go will start at 40 million bucks it was 15 million so it's jumping up what is that in in regular math like three times as much four times as much whatever um the cost of the ticket though it's gonna go from one to two bucks so it's gonna be two bucks for the mega million and the powerball now um but (laughs) i'll get to that here in just a second um but you'll still be able to buy tickets for one dollar, but for whatever reason, you'll get a lesser prize or whatnot. Um, for three dollars, man, you can buy a quick pick that will get you two entries. So basically, you get two tickets for one hundred and fifty dollars. They kind of like consolidate them. Um, I might go that route. That seems like more around my lane right there. Um And the odds are going to change now. Currently, in order to win the Mega Million Jackpot Prize, a player must match five white balls. (laughs) And I'm I'm such a child. And the Mega Ball. Uh, There are 75 white balls, so 1 through 75, and 25 Mega Balls, 1 through 25. But now, beginning on this Saturday coming up, the number of white balls is decreasing to 70, but the number of Mega Balls is going to 35. So previously, the odds were one in 259 million. God, it got harder. They go from from that to one in 303 million to win the Mega Millions. So for all my lotto players out there, there's that. Let's take a look back, and then I'll tell you guys what my man found out about dead bugging. (laughs) Now, now, now. let's take a look back. Day. On this day. Oh, apparently there were pictures. I had never well, I'll tell you guys how I found out about it. I think I already told you, but I'll I'll revisit that whole how I got hip to dead bugging. <laughs> On this day in 1964, Jim Marshall of the Minnesota Vikings picked up a San Francisco fumble and ran the damn wrong way. 66 yards into his own end zone. And he threw the damn ball away, which gave him safety. <laughs> On this day in 1978, Gaylord Perry became the first pitcher to win the Cy Young Award in both leagues when he when he won the award in the National League. On this day in 1986, the Boston Red Sox lost Game 6 of the World Series to the New York Mets. The winning run was scored in the 10th inning when a ground ball went through, you know it, Boston's first baseman, Bill Buckner's legs. And they've hated that man all the way up until they won the first World Series a couple of years ago. Idiot Boston fans. On this day in 1987, the Minnesota Twins defeated the St. Louis, excuse me, defeated St. Louis in the World Series to include indoor games. It was the first championship for the Twins. On this day in 1998, Jason Elam of the Denver Broncos kicked a 63-yard field goal. The kick tied Tom Dempsey's 28-year-old NFL record. I think that record has been tied like two or three times uh, here recently in the last like decade or so. On this day in 1998, the GOAT, Jerry Rice of the San Francisco 49ers, set an NFL record when he caught a pass in his 184th consecutive game. Also during the game, Rice became the first player to surpass 17,000 career receiving yards. On this day in 2000, we just talked about this guy, NBA Commissioner David Stern announced that the Timberwolves, the Minnesota Timberwolves, would, be, would forfeit their next five first-round draft picks and would be fined $3.5 million due to the violation of of the NBA salary cap. I didn't take the time to go the extra mile to f- find out what they did, but damn, five years worth of, of first round picks? No wonder they suck so bad for so long. On this day in 2003, Bobby Bowden of the Florida State Seminoles became the winningest coach in major college football history with 339 victories. Uh, Joe Paterno ended up surpassing that then because he let his homeboy come on campus and rape little boys. They took him away. And I think they gave him back. But if you go to an HBCU, um, you know what the real deal is. You know, Eddie Robinson. Also, man, by the way, man, shout out to the folks in Grambling. Apparently, there was a mass shooting or like two cats got shot. That's for black people. That's a mass shooting. If like more than one person get killed by the same weapon and you black, that's considered a mass shooting to us. So 
Um, yeah, shout out to those folks out there, man. It was only a matter of time when it before some some black dude was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that too. Just like Crystal Meth, same type of situation. Anyway, on this day in 2005, finally, the Chicago White Sox defeated the Houston Astros when they were in the National League. Somebody said the other day, like, why we got two National League teams in the <laughs> in the World Series? Um, they defeated them 7-5 seven, seven to five in the first World Series game to be held in Texas. The game was also the longest in World Series history at 5 hours and 41 minutes. No way in hell. Six hours? Crazy. The game actually ended on October 26th, the next day. You must be out your damn mind. Shout out to last night's game, though. Two hours and, what, 38 minutes? Yeah, I was about that life. And I, ain't, I still didn't watch that whole game. That's your hump day edition of On This Day. This is the One Mike with Big Mike Show. Here at Spreaker.com, the Spreaker app. And tune in. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Most Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, starting at 7 o'clock. Um, also, the Facebook live stream is going on on Facebook, on my Facebook page, at the number one, M-I-C-W-I-T-H-B-I-G-M-I-K-E. Um, my guest from the previous segment. Couldn't wait to run to his computer and and, and Google dead bugging. And um, his comment was, dude, dead bugging. (laughs) That's nasty. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Yeah, I found out about that um, watching LeBron James's the show that he uh, uh, executive produces called um, Survivor's Remorse. And um, yeah, one of the girls the girl that dates the star of the show, he's a professional basketball player. And she ran to a group of other girls and she asked her, do you dead bug him? And she said, what is that? And then she told her what dead bugging was. And I was like, that can't be a real thing. <laughs> that can't be a real thing that, that dudes are all about. And then this past week, I think it was on Friday. Um, Gabrielle union was on somebody's show. Yeah. Talking about that's her thing with Dwayne Wade. Mm hmm. Yeah, her and D Wade. The, the dead bugging is real. Yep, I don't know. I don't know if, I'm t- if that just tell, tells my age. I'm not usually the one that's a moralist about certain things. I'm the guy who always says, "Man, whatever in your relationship keeps keeps you happy, and it don't bother, and it don't it don't hurt nobody else. Go for it." But yeah, there, there got to be lines somewhere. There, there just have to be lines somewhere because then you don't want to kiss me. I'm just saying. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can do exactly what Rob Rob Grimwood did. Go get grossed out, and you can Google. And then, like he's saying, he's going to have to (laughs) delete his browser history (laughs) because of what (laughs) what dead bugging is. All right, anyway, enough dead bugging. Hashtag sports related, though. It is sports related. I I made it sports related. Um, Back to the world of the NBA. Uh, Anthony Davis finally here. Uh, well, well, two things. First of all, yeah, what's happening out there in L.A., and I'm not talking about the Lakers, uh, the Clippers. Like, Blake Griffin is really, he's really, um, yeah, he's really taking on that, that role of leadership in that on that team now that Chris Paul is gone. And he seems to be healthy, which, I mean, I think Blake Griffin is usually healthy at the beginning of every season. But he's doing, like, old-school Blake stuff, and he dunked on um, – what was that kid's name? Rudy Gobert, and it was—it's like one. It's always so damn disrespectful when Blake Griffin dunks on these cats, man. It's—it's it's just mad. It's memeable, like damn a poster. It's like he put people on memes, dude. That root, like if you hadn't seen it, just yeah, take the time real quick. You can still listen to me. Just go to your go to your your, your Google machine and and type in Blake Griffin, Rudy Gobert, and just watch how disrespectful he just put all his junk in the, in the man's face. He's already seven foot, whatever. It's just crazy disrespectful, man. Um, Anthony Davis injured again. He's got like a knee situation. The MRIs have come back negative. But, you know, it's, it's what it is, man. Anthony Davis, it's, it's been hard for him to stay healthy. And I started wondering, I'm like, is it because he grew so fast his body still hasn't uh, uh, acclimated to how? Because I think Anthony Davis in high school, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't even six foot. And like over the span of like a summer and, and a year, he was like 6'11 overnight, 6'10, 6'11 overnight. That can't be, you know, good for your bones to grow that fast and you still playing that that high impact sport that that's so that impacts your joints so much. So he was out. Uh your homie Boogie though, Boogie Cousins, dropped 39. Like I think it was 39 and 14. 
that dude is amazing. Like he don't because of all like what people would consider antics, like he don't get the props that maybe he should get. But oh my goodness, that dude is a real ass basketball player. You understand me? Um, he he made some comments today that he he thinks he may have stayed in sta- in Sacramento so long. Uh, first of all. Thank you, Captain Obvious. But second of all, I don't know that it's that obvious because with the, especially with the new CBA, this current CBA, the amount of money that he is going to now uh, not receive because he is no longer with the team that drafted him, I think that's how it goes, is, is substantial. You know what I mean? And, and the CBA was drafted this way to, to allow teams like Sacramento, smaller market teams, to hold on to their, their stars because the financial compensation would be so much better for the player than if they were to, you know, pull a LeBron and, and move on somewhere else. So I, I could see why he wanted to stay. And then he was talking all that stuff about, yeah, I want my my jersey and the rafters here and all this kind of craziness. But now he got a taste of something different. Like playing with a real ass, another real basketball player. <laughs> and like this ain't this, this ain't uh, uh, Willie, Willie, Willie Cauley Stein. This ain't that. <laughs> it's a real dude in Anthony Davis, and they they make a little bit of magic. I saw him play the other day against Golden State, and man, it looks at, at, at points in the game. If it wasn't that team, if it wasn't the Warriors, it, it it seems unfair that both of those guys are that big and also that skillful. You see these big ass dudes running the break off the rebound. It's like what? It's like Draymond Green, but like six inches taller or five inches taller. It's it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, moving on here to the world of the NFL, a couple things going on. Of course, we've got to, we've got to have our daily Colin Kaepernick update. Of course. Um, I don't say that, I don't want to say that in the way that where I'm like getting tired of it, but you know, he's a, he's a guy whose name is, con- is, is continuously in the news. Um, this time it has nothing to do with these team, these teams signing quarterbacks that you've never heard of to replace injured guys because that's over and it's been over for a long while now. The it being Colin Kaepernick's NFL career. Uh, but he may have a new one. Just signed reportedly a million dollar book deal uh, for his story or whatnot. So, yeah, good for him. He's got to find a way to recoup that million dollars he's donating, man. Like that don't come that don't come at a, at a non cost. I don't care how much money you already had. Like a million dollars is a million dollars unless you got a billion and he ain't got a billion. You know, so if you still in that tax bracket of an athlete, a million dollars is a million dollars. You know what I mean? That dude is not even 30 years old and he's unemployed for, 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 for all intents and purposes. He's unemployed and he doesn't really have any other than being an activist and being a, a philanthropist, no real recognizable skills. I don't know how many words he type a minute or any of those things. So yeah, getting that million back could be a thing. Now here's the other part about that though. For all the people who were saying that he needs to speak, um, when when these publishing companies, you know, they give you these book advances or they pay you for these books or whatnot, you also have to go out and promote the book, which means a media tour, which means Colin Kaepernick, the guy who we hadn't really heard from since last year when he was playing football, is going to have to speak. And it can't just be about the book. People are going to ask him about a lot of other different things, man, about the blackballing stuff, about uh, about the, the reasoning he, he he began sitting and then kneeling. Um, speaking of speaking of going from sitting to kneeling, I'm I'm way over this Nate Boyer dude, and I know people feel like because somebody's a veteran and a Green Beret and all this kind of stuff that you gotta always give him a pass. Not me, dude, because at some point you're just a dude, and like every time like somebody wants to know something about you know Colin Kaepernick or whatever, they call this dude, and from my understanding, he don't even talk to the to the cat no more. Like this dude around, I remember right after the New Year. No, no, right before the new year, before they did like the man of the year stuff, um, that he was asked about Colin Kaepernick. He said he hadn't spoken to him. And then he went on to talk about how he feels like at this point, it's a publicity stunt. Like ain't nobody talking about that, but I don't, they hashtag never forget. I don't forget. And now my man is like extending his, his 15 minutes of fame where no one would, no one would even care who you are, dude, if it wasn't for Colin Kaepernick. But I digress. I just wanted to say that I'm, you know, I'm kind of over that whole little thing. You know, when I talk to Green Beret and former long snapper, wait, what? Lead with that. Leave the long snapper part and then find out how many people really want to hear from his ass. Anyway, um, 
And also, the other Colin Kaepernick news is him. He's been officially invited by the NFL brass to the next uh, players and owners meeting that they're going to have, which is going to be, it feels like it's going to be awkward. You know what I mean? You're going to be sitting around with all these owners that don't want him in the NFL, but still want them. Because all this now is, is posturing. It's what Jerry Jones said the other day. It's about perception. It's about making it seem like we care all of a sudden. But the real deal is like, why now? Why all of a sudden now you care? Because you ain't care in the 70s. You ain't care in the 80s. You ain't care in the 90s. You ain't care in the first decade of the 2000s. But now all of a sudden you got an orange at dumbass in the, in, the, in the White House that's calling y'all out and calling y'all punks, basically. Now all of a sudden, well, we got to figure out a way to move from protest to progress. Yeah, most people can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. You can have both. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you can do... You can do both. You're just 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 talking about and putting your name on certain things ain't really enough, especially with this administration. Like, come on, let's be real. Um, but shout out also. Let me let me shout out to Chris Long and 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 Anquan Bolden and uh, um, Malcolm Jennings and and Tory Smith. Um, them dudes got up early in the morning after playing a Monday night football game. Three of them, of course, Anquan Bolden is retired and went to Washington. Man, to really. Uh, try to get things like minimum or yeah, uh, mandatory minimum sentence reform done and, and bail reform done. Like these dudes that's actually not only just talking to talk, but they walk in the walk. So I got to make sure that you know, while I have the opportunity to big up them, man, you know what I mean? Cause they don't have to do that kind of stuff Like they could do. They could do the posturing and get on their knees and all that kind of stuff during football games or before football games. But when it's time to wake up on your off day, ain't going to do some real ass work. How many people are doing that, you know? So I, I think those things, along with, you know, along with continuing to to bring attention to the issues, are I think it's a conglomerate. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that needs to be done in in concert. Then if the NFL has it their way, though, y'all quit all that damn kneeling and, and disrespecting our flag and our damn and our damn song. That's about racist and written by about slavery and, and celebrating slavery and written by a slave owner. Go right ahead. Um, in other news, there's no punishment coming down for Jarvis Landry. Um, I don't know if you, I, I just, matter of fact, ironically, I just spoke about this the other day, how uh, Jarvis Landry was the other guy, was another one of the, uh, another NFL player who was, uh, had some domestic violence charges dismissed against him. But the NFL was like, nope. Nope, 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 not so fast. Of course, we've got to investigate. We got to do the real investigation. Well, their real investigation in, ended, and apparently um, the accuser in the case refused to uh, uh, cooperate with the NFL. So it just marked, they just, we don't have enough evidence. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that just shows you right there. That's the extent of their evidence. Because the woman said this happened. We're going to punish you. It kind of it kind of shines a bright light on this whole on how much of a farce the whole Ezekiel Elliott thing is. And I, I'll go back and say, I don't know. Only two people know what happened. Well, only in one case, three people know what happened because her best friend testified that she asked her to lie to the police about him putting his hands on her. But only a handful of people know what happened. One of them not being me. So I'm not here to say that he never did anything to her. What I'm saying is the NFL is full of crap. Making you feel like, yeah, it took us a year to investigate this, and this is what we came up with. Nothing. Because as we found out, the person who was in charge of the investigation, initially, not even initially, she said that uh, I don't recommend any type of punishment. But Roger Goodell was like, shit, you full of crap. It's about to be some punishment. Watch this. <laughs> Watch me suspend this dude for six games when you said the threshold was four. Just saying. So stupid. Um... Last year, a linebacker named Chris Boylan, young linebacker for the 49ers, retired. After one year in the NFL, he cited the fact that he was uh, uh, he was looking out for his future, you know, his, his body, his health. And now no one's heard anything from him, but now he's speaking out. He's talking about uh, the league and how they handle concussions and, and, and the information as far as chronic traumatic encephalopathy goes. Uh, he did a PSA. Um, he was talking about, like I said, the inadequacy of the NFL in making players privy to the risks of CTE and how serious they are. 
Um, the video was published by the Union of Concerned Scientists on Tuesday, um, using the NFL to in- indict how science is being ignored for lobbies and corporate interests. Of course, can't have people running around thinking you're going to get brain damage from, from running into each other head first all the time. Um, he also talked about that Boston University study that found brain damage the CTE in 110 of 111 deceased NFL players. And of course, those athletes weren't just random athletes chosen. They were actually uh, their brains were donated because the family members were or had concerns. But still, that's a pretty you know, telling thing when someone who was someone could see it in you to the point where they say, yeah, I need you to look at my husband's brain or my my boyfriend or my brother's brain or my uncle's brain, whoever. They were to that person. Look at it. Look at their brain. And 110 out of 111 of them had uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, I told y'all, man, the NFL ain't worried about these, these these protests and all that as much as they worried about this damn head injury thing. Like, this is the stuff that affects kids playing. This protest thing will go. It, it'll be gone before long. And they're, they're, they're already figuring out a way to, to make make it go away. But this this head injury thing. No matter how much they keep spending this, we got brand new helmets. We got brand new field turf and all this kind of bull crap. Yeah. You going to put a helmet on my brain inside my skull till that happens. So it's a non-starter every time for people who have just the slightest bit of, of knowledge. And but this kid, Chris Boylan is saying that the NFL is keeping that knowledge away from its players. Um, and finally, before I get out of here for the night. Um, oh, two things. Y'all got to check out White Famous. That's my new little show now. My old lady who's still not here. She's still in Florida taking care of uh, people for FEMA. Um, she asked me the day if I watched White Famous. And I hadn't been watching it. I meant to, but I hadn't. So last night I, got, I caught a couple of episodes, uh, the first two of three episodes uh, while the baseball game was going on. And it's mad funny, man. It's a funny-ass show, man. That dude from um from the news desk on Saturday Night Live, Jay Farrell. He's a star of that joint. It's crazy funny. The Indian dude from the last, from the last uh, barbershop movie, he's in it as well. They crazy as hell, man. Um, so if you're looking for something to, to make you laugh and it's a good movie, you know, support a black product. Yeah, uh, Black Famous or White Famous is the name of it. It's pretty damn cool. Um, but finally, what the hell is going on with Cam Newton? Like, seriously, like usually I'm in a position where I kind of like defend Cam being Cam and being what he is. But what he did today, after last week, you remember me telling you he, he skipped media. He skipped media availability, coming off the heel of, of what he did and the things that he said that people got so offended by uh, involving the female reporter. Reporter, Well, today, he's at the podium, and of course, Cam is always a different dude when they lose or when they're losing. And he starts talking about how they're playing uninspired football and they're not having fun and there's no energy and blah, 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 blah. So the next question comes from a, a reporter and basically the reporter is just following up on what he's talking about, the energy in the team. And he starts asking him about, you know, chunk plays. And it seems like those chunk plays bring energy to the team. And if Cam feels like that's something that he that he and the team could sustain over the long haul, Cam just rolls his eyes, says next question and then says, thank you. And, and storms off the off the uh, off the, away from the podium. And I'm like. That dude didn't ask you no, like, no setup question. It was a pretty straightforward football question. I'm not, like, I'm, I'm not embellishing the question at all. That was, that, was, that was the genesis of the question the dude asked. He was just basically picking up where Cam left off at the point that they weren't having fun in those, all those things. He was asking, do, do, do he think or does he think continuing to get big plays and chunk plays during the game would help bring that energy up? And does he think that type of – those type of plays are sustainable. My man just got an attitude and walked off like a little, like a little woman. I know that's not politically correct, but you know what? I don't, I don't do well with that kind of stuff. You, you get what I'm saying? If you ever had an argument with a woman, you know what I'm talking about. Or if a woman has ever been perturbed with you, you know I'm spot on with that. Um, and it's just weird, man. It's just weird sometimes. Like I understand not liking to lose, but you didn't lose nothing today. You just had practice today because, like, the game's already happened. You're, you're you're preparing for the next game. If you still got that type of attitude, and I'm not, I'm not even the guy that's always on some old, be more professional, act like a professional. No, I'm not on that. But I'm not the dude that's, that's for that disrespect stuff either. Like, that dude didn't disrespect you. He's doing his gig. He's asking you a regular football, softball question. 
And as the Panthers do, man, they came out defending him. Cam talked for nine minutes, so he felt like his media availability was done. Okay, well, say that before the dude asked the question. Like, after you get through answering the question before, say that then and then leave. But when you do that after a dude asks you a question, you roll your eyes and say next question without even without even uh, uh, acknowledging the dude, that's like, come on, B. Like, at some point, man, like, boys got to be men. You know what I mean? And that kind of stuff, that like, just being blatantly disrespectful to another human being when he's done nothing to you, it's just the fact that your team has been losing. Like, take it up with them. Take it up with Devin Funches. And take it up with, with, with Ed Dixon and, and, and Christian McCaffrey and them cats. Some poor dude just trying to get, you know, get a sound bite or get an answer for his story ain't his problem. You know what I mean? He's not the one making you lose and make you throw balls over people's heads and throw interceptions and things of that nature. It's not on him. Anyway, man, I'm hungry as hell. <laughs> Random. I'm hungry as hell, so I'm about to I'm about to get up out of here, man. Um appreciate everybody for checking in, whether on Facebook, whether you listened and didn't participate. If you did participate, my man, I am no dose. Big L, appreciate y'all as usual. Uh the homie Rob Grimwood, he'll be back next week, next Wednesday. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, check out his website, though. Um, CrossTheFantasyPond.com for all your fantasy needs. Um, I'll be back on Monday. Nothing coming out of me on Friday. But you still got all my old interviews, all my, my old shows. So you can share those with your friends and family. Next week is Halloween, though, right? When do we when do we fall back? Like the time and all that. Because it's getting like dark. Excuse me, mad early lately. So I know it's coming up pretty soon. It's supposed to be fall. It was so cold this morning, man. My damn areolas was tight. Anyway, it's going to do it for me, man. You guys be safe. Take care of each other. Um, Have a good rest of your week and weekend. And don't forget, all you need is one mic.